Madam Chairwoman, Ranking Member, uh, um, and thanks to the panel for being here on a really, really important topic in terms of trade. I, uh, a week or so ago, I was with the uh, Pennsylvania Secretary of Agriculture who uh, laid out, the, I thought, in rather unique terms the, uh, the opportunities within trade when he said, America is a country of 303 million stomachs and the world has 7 billion. And that made sense to me. Uh, my question, first of all, uh, is uh, traditionally uh, we have uh, miscellaneous tariff bills, MTBs as referred to around the Hill, are introduced each session of Congress and these bills usually request certain imports into the United States to be given duty free or reduced duty status. Uh, MTBs tend to be really non-controversial, everybody signs off on them. <clears throat> In the 110th Congress there was no, no MTB. Uh, in 111th, we've yet to see floor consideration. Now, I recently was told by representatives from uh, the uh, National Association of Manufacturers that the MTB is critical in the wish list for things to get done during the remainder of the 111th Congress. And what I, my question is, uh, uh, where would you place this on your membership's collective radar? And I'll open that up to anyone that may have an opinion. Mr. Greenblatt, we'll yeah, start with a, you. A, as, a, as a manufacturer, this is a very big topic for us, and uh, we need to get these things passed. Uh, we want it helps American jobs, it helps American grow and thrive. Okay, thank you. Uh, on behalf of the tech community, we uh, we have enjoyed uh, past agreements like the Information Technology Agreement and others, which are designed to do exactly this. Uh, they are they can be beneficial uh, for U.S. technology because we still are the envy of the world in that regard, but also because our supply chains extend to these different countries and different customs uh, or tariff reductions, why I mentioned it in my uh, testimony, uh, can, be, can then be expressed in a more competitive price by our small company who's exporting back. Well, it seems to me in following this that the MTBs unfortunately got caught under the general cloud of earmarks, which I think is very unfortunate. I think the MTBs, as far as I, I haven't looked at all the details, but basically you're reducing the cost of inputs often to a firm which is exporting or maybe producing domestically, and I really don't think it, they should be bagged together with the other earmark issues. Okay, thank you. Mr. Johnson, any? I, I, I'm not aware that it's an issue in egg and food products. Okay. It might no. be. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bond, uh, following up on the technology, um, you know, how does engaging the global market uh, marketplace spur cutting edge innovative bond or inno innovative ideas? Sure, um, th that's where companies can have success initially as they uh, start up a new product. Um, fond of quoting a former uh, Commerce Secretary who, after hearing about all these small companies who were starting in garages, so said, "Well, America needs more garages." Um, we need more small innovative companies. They often find success in a particular niche. They make a company, uh, a product uh, like Mr. Greenblatt's overseas because they're embedded in the production process or something. There, there are numerous ways, but it's the, the innovation, the lion's share of innovation comes from the small companies and they're finding unique opportunities all around the world. So I, I think it does have to be central to U.S. policy. How are we gonna help small businesses they drive innovation, which then reverberates through the entire economy. Okay, can uh, just kind of a follow up, can you elaborate on the connection between increased exports and job creation? Uh, sure, we, we, um, we continue to see uh, growth in software services and other very high value add portions of our economy. Those are, as in my testimony tried to point out, uh, disproportionately reliant on overseas sales, <coughs> and um, and those are those small companies are where the cutting edge innovation is coming from. So I think the two are inextricably linked, and in, in why I was so happy to appear today. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Johnson. Most of my uh, farmers are, are fairly small farmers. Our dairy herds are about 86 head uh, <coughs> in in most of Pennsylvania, and certainly in my congressional district. Uh, how significant is the export trade, uh, in your opinion, is to uh, smaller farmers? Well, all, all of what farmers produce in most cases is aggregated and then those commodities are sold. Right. And as has already been said 
depending on the commodity, it may be well over half, it may be a third of the commodity that finds a home in an export market. Uh, you mentioned dairy, it's interesting. In my testimony, I talk about some of the issues you, we've faced with being uh, frozen out of markets relative to poultry, to pork, the BSE uh, issue with beef is another really good example. We're still out of many countries uh, without any real scientific basis for it. Uh, just this week, I believe China has uh, put in place barriers to dairy products. Uh, and if you think of the irony there, it was not that long ago when we were all reading on the front page of the papers about melamine in infant formula. And it wasn't in this country that folks were doing that kind of thing. And so that's an example of the kinds of things that, that I've tried to talk about, making sure that we, even after we sign these agreements, we've got to go back and make sure that we hold their feet to the fire. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman.